All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Theater B. We are here for another exciting presentation. Uh, this one with uh, Jalen Barbie and Nils Lauta. We are going to be talking about getting started with AI Dev Gallery in minutes. Over to you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Yeah, give them a round of applause. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you're having a great build this far. Uh, today, we're going to uh, talk about get started with AI Dev Gallery. My name is Nils Lauta. My name is uh, Jalen Barbie. And we're both on the Windows Developer Platform team. Um, so today, we're going to talk about Getting started with AI Dev Gallery. Uh, probably this week, you've seen a lot of the announcements around uh, Windows AI Foundries or local AI stack on Windows. Uh, we had a lot of cool new features to show you. Uh, but obviously, you want to get started as soon as possible and as quickly as possible. And that's really what AI Dev Gallery is, um, is all about. Um, so the goal was to really create an experience that is very simple to set up. You can just download it from the uh, Microsoft Store. Uh, and it allows you to play around with all of the new AI, local AI capabilities that we have on, uh, on Windows. But instead of uh, talking about it, we could actually just uh, talk to it. Let's right? fire up that. Let's do it. All right, so here we are in the gallery. This is the home page. You're greeted with your recent samples. Um, like you said, we have over 25 interactive samples. We touch things from Windows AI Foundry to the Windows AI APIs. Um, let's dive into some samples here. So this is the overview, overview page. We see we have some samples that range from text, smart controls, code, uh, image, and even audio and video. Uh, is there a sample you want to get started with? Yeah, maybe the chat one. Everyone that you want to the chat one, right? All right. So chat is a text model or a, ta a text sample. So first thing we need to do is figure out what model we need to use under the hood. So we open the model picker. Right. Uh, the first tab we have here is Onyx. So these are our Onyx open source models. Uh, we pull these in automatically when you download the app and you have the option to download these however you want and you can uninstall them as well. Uh, you can even add models from Hugging Face. So if you wanted to search by on Hugging Face, uh, we pull down models from Hugging Face so you don't have to leave the app to go find more models. Right. So you don't need to go to Hugging Face yourself or grab these models. The app will do all that for you. It will do all of that for you. Uh, so here we have 5.3.5 mini CPU. But we can also switch to the Windows AI APIs, and the code underneath just changes automatically. So the sample stays the same, but all the handling of the models, all of that is being adapted. Exactly, exactly. So again, we support Onyx open source models. We have the Windows AI API models that will run on the NPU. And then we even have a tap into the Windows Foundry local. Right. So maybe let's just pick 5.3.5 mini to start with the uh, open source. We say, hello. And we get our chat. And this is all happening locally on this machine. Nice. So no internet connection required. No, no internet connection required. Um, and we even have some samples that allow multiple models to interact with each other. So this is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. We're able to attach a PDF. And the language model is able to look through that PDF and use that as a resource to give you feedback. So you're allowed these hybrid scenarios where you can use an open source model with an API have your options to change your models here. Mm -hmm. And let's see, let's see how this works. We can select the Windows 95 manual. It indexes really quickly using this beautiful embeddings model. Right. And we're able to say, how do you launch an app? And the pages that talk about launching an app right. automatically appear on the right side. You can scroll through them, get to reading, but BiSilica takes care, of, takes care of it, tells us on page five how to launch an app. Nice. So now we see the tax model kicking in and basically describing how to how to do it. Exactly. That's cool. So these are really the the language models, right? But we also have a bunch of like exactly. non-language models. Exactly. So we have some visual models over here, like classify image. Uh huh. Uh, so in the the model picker. Oh. There we go. <laughs> the oh. model picker works the exact same when you're over in uh classify image uh -huh. and just get your image models. Right. Uh, so let's use SqueezeNet, works on the NPU. Uh, and if you notice this here, you have the option to change your execution provider. Right. So over here, you can discreetly say, hey, I want to use my QNN uh, NPU. We run the model, boom, runs on the NPU. Right, so you can, so you can change, you can toggle between models, but you can also toggle between running it on the CPU, GPU, 
GPU or MPU. But I guess that depends on what type of device you have. Right? Yeah. But the beautiful thing about Windows ML is that it takes care of all of that for you. So you don't have to think about it. Right. If I want to just say, prefer NPU, if I have an NPU, great, it'll run on the NPU. If right. not, it'll figure itself out and run on whatever hardware you have. Right. So on my machine at home, I only have a GPU. I can just select GPU and the exactly. staff, all of that will be automatically. And, and you, don't ask, you also don't have to worry about figuring out, oh, is this Qualcomm? Is this Intel? Right. Uh, this Intel machine here. The gallery works just fine. Everything runs the exact same way. The gallery figures all that out for you. Right, right. So I guess this is very uh, inspiring, right? If I just want to play around with, you know, what can what, what kind of local AI use cases can I can I play around with? Uh, this is great. But what if I want to move some of this code into my own app? Yeah. So it's great you bring up the code. So if you just want to look at the code, you're not ready to build just yet. Right. All the code is here. So all the helper files, any of the labels for the uh, the model, all that stuff is here. But if you want to export and get started with your own project, you press this button. You have the option to copy the model or just reference it from the model ca cache. And when you press export, you end up with a completely new Visual Studio project all right? with all the individual sample code pulled out and you're able to run it standalone. So let's check that out. You upload a picture here and we get it. Right. percent chance that's a golden retriever. Right. And again, so if I have uh selected a different model or even using the mpu or gpu all that code is automatically adapted and my exported samples basically optimized for the selection yeah, exactly so you never have to worry about the code underneath whatever options you have set in the gallery when you press export right export with the sample right that's cool so let's check out some more samples maybe detect human pose this is a model that you know maybe you could use as some sports scenarios or you know what i mean yeah uh yeah so you can really explore these different models however you want. So there are a couple of other tabs here at the left, right? What yeah. You... So we have the models tab, and this allows you to get some more information about all the models. So for example, over at 54 Mini, we have the documentation page straight just in here. So again, you don't have to leave the gallery to get your right. work done. All right. Um, but if you notice here, we have that we can open this in the AI toolkit uh, for VS Code. And we can open it in the playground. We could fine tune things here. We get open straight here, interact with some of the hyperparameters. But the beautiful thing is once you've done fine tuning, you can come back to the, uh, the gallery, open, let's say the chat sample again, right. and you want to use your fine tuned model this time. So instead of using PySilica, we're going to press add model. And here we'd be able to add that model from our disk. So the AI toolkit for VS code and the AI dev gallery are working together here to, uh, let you experiment with these. Right. Models. So it's really nicely integrated into like a single. Exactly. A single flow. Nice. And then again, the last tab here we have is the Windows AI APIs that we've heard all about. Is there one that you want to uh, jump into? Well, the text recognition one, that was always fun. Yep. So we have OCR here. And again, so the AI APIs are great. They come with the OS and we have very simple code here to do this amazing, powerful feature. Right. It's really cool. You can highlight it. Copy the copy and paste it out. It's great. Yeah. So we're really trying to integrate all of the samples and documentation to really have that single experience uh, and to really make that as 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 easy as possible to just copy and uh, copy code to your own project or to your own app. Yep. There are a couple of other APIs that we have here. Right? Yeah. Maybe the object object race is really cool too. Can uh, select this little GitHub logo and erase it. And oof. Oh, God. Right. <laughs> this is great. And these AI APIs all run on the NPU. These are all on the NPU on the Copilot Plus PC. Right, right. And again, that would work on Intel. That would work on Qualcomm. Any Copilot Plus PC, if the, the APIs are available. If they're not available, we make them available. Right. And they just start running flawlessly. All right. Cool. Yep. All right. So the uh, AI Dev Gallery is open source. So this is the repo. You can clone the project there. Uh, and start playing around with things uh it's also available on the windows store so if you don't even want to get into you know get up and get up and clone the repo you just download it from the windows store and get going uh if you want to get started uh the link is aka.ms slash ai dev gallery and since we're open source we're looking forward to any contributions or any ideas that you have uh we value that very much so um i hope you have a great rest of the build and thank you for attending yep. thank you for your time <laughs>